You have water. Okay, good evening everyone. <clears throat> okay, so I hope all of you are fine. And today we are going to have some important articles from the Hindu newspaper, 14th October 2022. Okay, so look at the first page, the most important development of today's, let's say, newspaper. Supreme Court delivers split verdict on Karnataka hijab ban. Right, so you may have gone through this news and there are many articles including editorial on this particular news. We will cover in depth this particular news from GS2 paper quality part. On bottom side there is this article, ISRO's own next generation launch vehicle may assume PSLV's role. PSLV polar satellite launch vehicle and GSLV geosynchronous or geostationary satellite launch vehicle. Right, so this PSLV is considered as workhorse of ISRO and it has been launching almost all satellites till the date, successfully we can say. Now it is going to be replaced in near future by the next generation launch vehicle. This is what ISRO chief is saying and that will be more powerful and it will be able to carry more load to the longer distances. So it is good that uh, we will develop some speciality in launching these uh, communication satellites or geostationary satellites because at present we are very much dependent on other countries for launch of this geostationary satellites, communication satellites. Right. So GS, GS3 paper, science and technology is there. Also for films it is important. <coughs> okay. Now on page number 7, ISRO proposes dedicated satellites for supporting agriculture sector. So at present there is no satellite dedicated for agriculture, rather earth observation satellites can be used for agriculture providing inputs to the farmers in the agriculture sector. But they are not much helpful, so this is what the view is there and therefore dedicated uh, let us say agriculture satellites could be launched and they could be directly uh, monitored by the agriculture ministry or departments themselves instead of ISRO. ISRO will just provide the, the technical support. So this will be good thing because you should know GS3 paper there are applied questions from the science and technology aspect. Space technology we learn about everything but what are the applications of space technology for the welfare of human on the ground? Ye sari bhi karni hai. And agriculture sector is one of the beneficiary. Yes, so on page number 8 there is this editorial that we will cover from <coughs> hijab row, the split word, verdict of Supreme Court over the hijab row. So fine, now earlier I was telling you about this population policy. So in India, the population policy that we have at national level, national population policy 2000. And this population policy is to some extent outdated, losing its relevance we can say. And therefore there is need of new population policy, this is what this article is saying. Those students who have not covered any particular let us say uh, issue regarding population aspect, they should read this news by themselves. Because in the near past, we have discussed in detail many such population related articles. It was in news because of Uttar Pradesh state population policy, it created controversy at that time. Okay, so uh, fine, so uh, you can go through this particular article, we will cover other important articles as like this one on page number 10 on bottom side. The Interpol General Assembly meeting in Delhi is going to ha happen on 18th October. Okay, and this, uh, this that's why it is in news. So we'll cover this news from prelims as well as mains perspective. What is Interpol and when it was set up? And along with that, uh, how many member parties are there? Members are there, and how the organizational structure is there? How red notice is issued by the Interpol? What is the meaning of that red notice? 
and what are the contemporary challenges that this, this Interpol is going to face in near future. So, all these aspects are there from GS2 paper IR section, international relations. All right, on page number 12, all this hijab ban will continue in Karnataka schools, colleges. There is this timeline on the top side related to, uh, let us say, this uh, hijab controversy in Karnataka. So, we will cover all this news in a one, uh, let us say, issue itself. Okay. Now, on page number 14, important news are there. Center to help set up paddy straw pallet units to arrest stubble burning. Okay, so this is important scheme launched by the Union Environment Ministry. It is saying that the government will help private sector to establish these palletization and torrefaction plants in Punjab and Haryana. So, the farmers will collect all this residue, crop residue and it's, they will sell to these plants and these plants will, uh, let us say, convert it into the stubble pallets, straw pallets and then they will sell this to thermal power plants. It will be utilized as a important substitute for coal as a fuel in coal fired thermal power plants. Understood. So, that is why it is going to be very beneficial and incentive for the farmers also because we are creating some kind of infrastructure with the help of private sector here. Okay. And government is supporting financially. On right hand side, MG Narega is made up, up for 80 percent income loss during the pandemic. Now, what we observed during the pandemic, especially during lockdown, there was job losses income loss because economic activities came to stand still right and therefore especially those working in unorganized sector they lost all income sources they went back to their villages and there they do, did not have any kind of avenues for income in such situation mg narega was very helpful this mg narega is a very important social sector scheme it benefited. Ab is cheez ko aapko ek supporting fact likhna hai, data likhna hai. This is the data. There was this one study uh, by non-profit organizations which found that MG Narega was very important, very helpful for those people uh, who were suffering income loss. Understood? So, you quote this study there whenever we are writing in answer. On the bottom side, the quest for ghost cat based on lore. This is related to Arunachal Pradesh, Namdapa National Park. The, the let us say forest officials are searching for traces of snow, snow leopard in that particular national park. Now, Namdapa National Park, the question was asked already in prelims examination 2015. We will cover that question, the nature of question. Along with that, we will know the basics of this national park along with that snow leopard as a species its habitat, its spread, threats as well as IUCN conservation status. Understood? Okay. <clears throat> Fine then. So, let us go in details without losing any time. First one, Supreme Court delivers split verdict on Karnataka hijab ban. Okay. Now, let me give you the background background to you. <coughs> so, we all know that each and every religion has their own religious practices and accordingly they have customs and traditions also including dressing style. And we know that Islam religion is also having their own dressing style especially for women and they wear hijab. We all know about this. Now, this controversy started with Karnataka government earlier this year having one circular for all schools in the states saying that there will be strict school uniform that all students should wear and there should not be anything that should be worn uh, except this uniform indirectly it is like hijab ban not directly you can understand this is indirectly because uniform is not mentioning about this 
अंडरस्टूड लेट मी शो यू द टाइम लाइन एस्पेक्ट हियर क्लियरली यहाँ पे देख सकते हैं आप अभी ओके सो दिस ईयर फेब्रुवरी थर्ड आयशात शिफा एंड तहरीना बेगम स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट प्री यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज इन कुंदरपुरा वेर डिनाइड एंट्री इन टू देयर कॉलेज फॉर रिफ्यूजिंग टू टेक ऑफ देयर हिजाब आफ्टर दिस कर्नाटका सर्कुलर एजुकेशन सर्कुलर दिस वॉज बींग स्ट्रिक्टली इम्प्लीमेंटेड एंड देयर फॉर दीज गर्ल्स वेर नॉट अलाउड इन द एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन ओके On 4th February, they made a representation before Deputy Commissioner Udupi District to direct the college authorities to let them enter into their college and complete their studies. On 5th February, the government issues an order referring to Karnataka Education Act 1983 to conclude that prohibiting hijab does not amount to violation of freedom of religion. the two students move high court thereafter now see here on 8 february the clashes break out among the students from two communities in udupi and then the schools were shut down we all know about this the kind of violence that happened and this affected the education of the children okay now on 10th february high court passes interim order saying colleges in the state can reopen but students cannot be allowed to wear any piece of clothing that is religious till the matter is pending so indirectly in the interim verdict or interim order the court the karnataka high court said that hijab should not be worn in the schools and colleges now thereafter on 15th march karnataka high court rules hijab not part of essential islamic religious practice and upholds the government order karnataka government order thereafter on 13th july supreme court agrees to hear appeals against karnataka high court verdict see the timeline and now on 13th october supreme court delivers the split verdict and refers the case to cji to be placed before the larger bench probably before the constitution bench understood this is the timeline now we will analyze this how let's say the issue is happening the present let's say view of supreme court although although it takes lot of time for the discussion in detail and this particular issue will be discussed again in ed lectures okay ed lectures mein aapko kafi detail mein discussion ho jata hai but i will try to cover the maximum important aspects now <clears throat> what karnataka high court had said after this timeline Karnataka High Court has gone through three aspect. First, it has said that hijab is not essential. Wearing hijab is not essential practice of Islam. Essential practice in Islam religion. Second, it is talking about that not wearing hijab or let's say restricting those wearing hijab. into the or not in, uh, allowing them enter into educational institution does not amount to discrimination <coughs> does not amount to discrimination directly or indirectly so they are saying that this karnataka karnataka government order is not discriminating on the basis of religion and third aspect they they said that when the students are entering into school or college premises entering into school or college premises their freedom of expression and freedom of religion gets restricted these are not there when you are entering into school and college premises this was the view expressed by karnataka high court okay so uh, now let's say what present supreme court judgment is talking about all, all this first you should understand that the two judge bench of supreme court has not gone into saying that hijab is whether it is essential practice or not now here you should understand what is essential practice doctrine 
this can be you know the found in the or it can be rooted 1954 supreme court case shirur math case okay and supreme court has from time to time and on case to case basis has said that a particular practice is essential practice and particular practice is not essential practice when we say essential practice of the religion then the court goes into investigating the matter by considering the belief or faith of people of that community whether the people believe that the particular practice is essential for by for, for following this religion or not to logo ke view jo hai na wo bahut matter karte hai yahan par to call a particular practice as a essential second aspect you should understand if particular practice is present in the religion or religious as a practices but is not important or let's say if it is not followed it is not let's say violating in large scale a particular uh, let's say custom or tradition okay second thing we should understand if the practice is impacting fundamental rights of the people if the practice is impacting fundamental rights of the people then it will not be called as essential practice okay for example what supreme court had said in triple talaq case triple talaq it is also religious practice but the the court said that it is not essential practice okay it is not essential practice and it led to violation of fundamental rights of the women it led to violation of fundamental rights of the people women and that's why it was struck down as unconstitutional okay or we can say that illegal now you should be knowing about uh, let's say certain examples jaise aapne triple talaq ka dena chahiye okay so uh, this example could be written some cases like shirur math case uh, you can give this example now what supreme court has said at present the two judges differed on their view Uh, on this particular issue one judge justice hemant gupta said that right to express herself by wearing a hijab stops at the school gate freedom of expression guaranteed under article 191a does not extend to wearing head scarf understood so again this view is basically upholding the view of karnataka high court yes, sir, it will match us to karnataka yes this judge but the other judge justice sudhanshu dhulia see in examination you need not to mention name of the judge in your answer Only one yes. judge and other judge there is one judge theek hai naam likhne ki zarurat nahi hai wearing hijab should be simply a matter of choice it may be the only way her conservative family will permit her to go to the school and in those cases her hijab is her ticket to education see this is very very important observation and basically it is empathizing those children or girl child who loses on access to education just because she is not wearing this head scarf understood so if suppose let's say the conservative family muslim family is there and muslim family is not allowing women to go outside the house without wearing this head scarf then how she will go to school okay and just because of let's say banning this indirectly through such government order basically we are restricting right to education this view is taken now here you should understand that which rights of the the children are getting affected first you should know that there is article 19 freedom of just now we said that article 191a 
freedom of speech and expression okay then we have article 21 right to life and liberty personal liberty and then we have article 25 right to freedom of conscience okay right to freedom of conscience this is individual belief that the person is having okay faith or belief and this this is very important aspect all these are questioned here these girl children they are actually saying that wearing hijab is our choice to yahan pe kya aa gaya article 25 then restricting them for not wearing that freedom personal liberty is being impacted and here they are wearing this to express their belief or faith in a religion article 19 समझ में आ रहा है ये सब ओके यस देयर आफ्टर वी कैन से दैट आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ए बट वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट द कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी इज रिलेटेड टू हाई स्कूल एज वेल एज कॉलेजेस ठीक है बट आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन इज राइट टू एजुकेशन इनडायरेक्टली इफ वी आर नॉट अलविंग दैम अगेन इट इज गेटिंग इम्पैक्टेड सो you should be knowing about this you should write this in your answer kaise fundamental rights impact ho rahe hai okay now in analysis we are learning about this next thing you should understand the judge who is saying that right to education is getting impacted is basically empathizing with their condition situation while the other judge is purely talking about right to equality okay and discipline what he is talking see aapko dono side ke arguments pata hone chahiye he is talking about discipline and that's why he is emphasizing on uniform wearing uniform is more important wearing uniform is more important and he is also talking about right to equality everyone should be equal why a particular let's say children belonging to particular religion should be allowed to wear some kind of let's say cost, uh, uh, let's say clothes which are uh, important for their religious practices a religion to ye kya ho gaya right to equality nahi hoga na fir okay tomorrow the other let's say people belonging to other religion they will also start demanding we will wear what is important for our religion understood and because of that what happens is the school or college which are educational institutions campuses where there is promotion of values like equality liberty fraternity fraternity and the other constitutional values they will get impacted ye arguments is side ke hai ye arguments hone ke baad analysis and evaluation should involve arguments from both sides understood so now what next of course what next larger bench <clears throat> larger bench will decide on this case and hope so larger bench is having some odd strength even strength wala jab bench hota hai especially such certain sen- let's say sensitive issues pe supreme court ne even uh, judges ka bench nahi rakhna chahiye what it shows the split verdict what what it is showing it is showing or simply reflecting views of society it is reflecting views of society because some members of society believes like this some members of society believes like this okay and therefore the final verdict we cannot arrive in two judge bench four judge bench so there should be odd strength theek hai to arrive at decisive decision jisko hum bolte hain fine okay now hmm so if you continue like this it may have been to education divide also now. so once again it goes to previous case hindu hindu pakistan as muslim pakistan like if they have the chance to <coughs> nahi the, see the supreme court will decide uh, properly on this issue uh, in future and the 
you can see that why it is happening in Karnataka only, why it is not happening in other states. Other states should also say like that such similar kind of circular. The, <coughs> the important terminology we should know that there is doctrine of reasonable accommodation. Reasonable accommodation. That means we cannot always have equality. We should promote tolerance. We should promote diversity, plurality. Okay, and we know that Indian society is diverse, and therefore we need to show tolerance towards the 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 way of living of other people. And there should be some kind of, let's say, reasonable accommodation for such practices. Like, for example, we have added ourselves in the constitution, the exceptions to Sikh community. Wearing turban, carrying kirpan, it is exception, no? Right? So, uh, this is reasonable accommodation. It is essential to the region uh, for, for them. Okay? So, these things you should know. Fine. Next article is Interpol General Assembly meeting in Delhi is going to happen. So that's why it is in news 18th October. In past, <coughs> in India, meeting of General Assembly of Interpol happened twice. Now about Interpol, you should know that it is having 195 members, it was set up in 1923 and along with that it is headquartered in France. <coughs> this is not, we can say, investigating agencies. It is not investigating agency or action taking agency, it is just collecting Compiling and coordinating member states or investigating agencies of member states related to the data on criminals. Kya hota hai? India mein crime karke bhaag jata hai dusri country mein criminal. Ab दूसरी कंट्री में जुरिस्डिक्शन नहीं है ना हमारे इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसीज का इसलिए उनका इनफॉरमेशन हमें पता नहीं है कुछ पता नहीं है नाउ इंडियन इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसी गेटिंग एजेंसीज कैन प्रोवाइड टू दिस इंटरपोल द आइडिया दैट अ पर्टिकुलर क्रिमिनल हैज डन द द सीरियस क्राइम इन द कंट्री एंड एस्केप द वी बिलीव दैट ही इज रिसाइडिंग इन द अदर कंट्री नाउ इंटरपोल विद कोऑर्डिनेट विद द इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसी ऑफ दैट कंट्री Understood. And if suppose that is confirmed, then they will help each other to catch that criminal. Understood. And for that purpose, for certain criminals, red notice is issued by Interpol. For certain criminals who have done the grave crimes, okay, very large crimes. And because of that, let's say the country is concerned and therefore, this red notice is issued. Now the concerned country, the, the country which, let's say, uh, in which the crime is done, this country provides this, uh, let's say, idea to Interpol, Interpol issues red notice to the other country where this criminal is residing. Now that country should help the other member to catch that criminal, if suppose such red notice is issued. Understood. Now, how Interpol is organized? Okay, there is this president elected by General Assembly for a period of four years. Then there is Secretary General. Again, he is elected by General Assembly for five years general secretary general is executive authority executive authority and president is head of the body 
president is head of the body understood so this is the organizational structure and what are the future challenges that interpol may face future challenges mein aapko pata hona chahiye there is increasing globalization and because of that transboundary crimes are increasing जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल ड्रग्स देन करेंसी आर्म्स ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग टेररिस्ट एक्टिविटीज मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग ऑल दिस इज हैपनिंग देन अलोंग विद दैट द न्यू टाइप ऑफ क्राइम्स आर एमर्जिंग फॉर क्रॉस कंट्री ट्रांस बाउंड्री साइबर क्राइम्स and therefore these are the major challenges you can talk about and in future they will increase mainly currency accounts yes you mention all types of transboundary crimes here okay fine this is interpol fine okay now moving on to next center to help set up paddy straw pallet units to arrest the stubble burning now we all know that this at this particular time of the year there is <coughs> issue of stubble burning especially in punjab and haryana region now we already know why this is happening there is only short window of 20 to 21 days between harvest of kharif crop and sowing of rabi crop within this short amount of time a large amount of this crop residue cannot be taken out from the fields and therefore they are burning that there also the second reason you should know every year about 27 million tons of paddy straw is generated in punjab and haryana the problem is that 75% or 20 million ton is from non basmati rice that cannot be fed to cattle because of its high silica content ab agar cattle ko nahi khila sakte hai to uske baad uska koi use nahi hai farmer ko isliye wo kya karte hai wahi jala dete hai that's why farmers resort to burning in the fields and of course there are no incentives no other incentives no other incentive ki usko nikalenge fir kisi ko bechenge wo nikalne ke liye man power lagta hai of course the manpower needs to be paid labor needs to be paid of course so financial incentives are not there and that's why so various initiatives are being taken this particular initiative talks about setting up of paddy straw palletization and torrefaction plants now pallets are like bricks bricks jaise hote hai pallets and by compressing all this rice straw or crop residue in these let's say uh, Uh, what you can say plants torrefaction and palletization plant plants these pallets will be sold to coal fired thermal power plants and there the amount of coal that is required will reduce okay coal is more polluting right so the amount of coal will reduce to usse cost bhi kam ho jayega fuel ka because this is residue no waste waste anyhow we are we are burning it that energy will be utilized here so it is benefiting other benefit is that farmers income will be there increase because they will be selling this no so of course it will benefit to the farmers also so three way we, we are benefiting one farmers are getting benefited they are they are getting income second is that it is reducing the amount of coal and third we are benefiting reduced air pollution energy. yes energy is utilizing in proper way reduced pollution is there no because coal fired power plants will have certain like wet scrubbers they will have electronic uh, let's say electric precipitators will be there so they will reduce the pollution understood these are the benefits you should be knowing about the benefits from mains perspective ओके सम टेक्निकल एस्पेक्ट्स आर देयर फंडिंग हाउ मच फंडिंग विल बी देयर इतना जरूरी नहीं है ये ठीक है
कितना पर पैसा लगता है वो प्लांट सेटअप करने में यस दिस डेटा यू शुड नो एवरी ईयर अबाउट 27 सेवन मिलियन टन ऑफ पैडी स्ट्रॉ इज जनरेटेड इन पंजाब एंड हरियाणा यू कैन स्टार्ट लाइक दिस नो इन आंसर इट सेल्फ ठीक है क्विक फैक्ट लिख के ही स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं आप आंसर में अ क्वेस्ट फॉर गोस्ट कैट बेस्ड ऑन लोअर सो यहाँ पे क्या है ना कि एक ट्राइबल पर्सन जो वहां पे रहते हैं उनको इसका स्किन मिला है स्नो लेपर्ड का उसकी वजह से क्या हुआ है द द फॉरेस्ट ऑफिशियल्स दे सर्वेड कंप्लीट नामडाफा नेशनल पार्क सीकिंग ट्रेसेस ऑफ स्नो लेपर्ड इन दैट नेशनल पार्क In other parts of Arunachal Pradesh, surely snail, snow leopard is found. But that particular national park, whether it is found, it was not clear yet. ठीक है तो उसके लिए ये news में है. See the news properly. How it is important for your examination? I will explain. बहुत ध्यान से सुनिए. A snow leopard has never been spotted nor recorded in the Namdafa National Park Tiger Reserve in Changlang district of Arunachal Pradesh. This particular reserve bordering Myanmar has an elevation varying from 200 meters to 4,571 meters above sea level. यानी कि कम हाइट से ज़्यादा हाइट तक पूरा ऐसे माउंटेनस पार्क है. So it will be having tropical climate, subtropical, then temperate, alpine, then we have tundra, taiga. टाइगर टुंड्रा फॉर टाइप ऑफ वी कैन से क्लाइमेट बिकॉज ऑफ अल्टीट्यूड अंडरस्टूड नाउ लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन यूपीसी क्वेश्चन रीड द क्वेश्चन समझ में आ रहा है विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग नेशनल पार्क हैज द क्लाइमेट दैट वेरीज फ्रॉम ट्रॉपिकल टू सब ट्रॉपिकल टू टेम्परेट एंड आर्कटिक सारा है उसमें और देखिए लास्ट ऑप्शन नाम दाफा नेशनल पार्क एंड दिस इज द आंसर स्टूडेंट्स आर कंफ्यूज बिटवीन नंदा देवी एंड नाम दाफा बट नंदा देवी इज ऑलरेडी एट सर्टन अल्टीट्यूड ठीक है तो वो नहीं है नाम दाफा नेशनल पार्क इज द आंसर तो आप ये जो न्यूज में जो पढ़ा दिया है उस पर ही क्वेश्चन पहले आया हुआ है इसका मतलब यूपीसी जो है कोई भी चीज न्यूज में होती है आर्टिकल में जो लिखा हुआ होता है उस पर क्वेश्चन पूछता है पता होना चाहिए लोकेशन लुक एट द मैप ऑफ प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश लुक एट दिस दिस टू नंबर दिस इज नाम डाफा नेशनल पार्क इट इज द ईस्टर्न मोस्ट नेशनल पार्क एंड टाइगर रिजर्व ऑफ इंडिया ईस्टर्न मोस्ट बॉर्डरिंग म्यांमार अंडरस्टूड ईस्टर्न मोस्ट टाइगर रिजर्व एंड नेशनल पार्क नाउ अलॉन्ग विद दैट अदर एडिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन दैट यू कैन टेक नाम दाफा फ्लाइंग स्क्वायरल दिस पर्टिकुलर स्पेसीज इज एंडेमिक Endemic means it is naturally found there only. It is endemic to this national park, Namdafa Flying Squirrel, and its conservation status is critically endangered. Critically endangered. Very important. Okay, Namdafa Flying Squirrel, and yes, this is located in Changlang district of Arunachal Pradesh, and it is having varying. climate tropical subtropical temperate then alpine then we can say arctic theek hai is tarike se yaad rakhna hai fine now about talking about the snow leopard theek hai to snow leopard ke bare mein zyada information lete hain look at this how does it look like <coughs> okay it is also known as ounce because panthera uncia ye naam hai isi ki wajah se ठीक है आउंस देन हैबिटेट नेटिव टू माउंटेन रेंजेस ऑफ सेंट्रल एंड साउथ एशिया 
सो इट इज नॉट एंडेमिक टू इंडिया इट इज फाउंड इन अदर कंट्रीज ऑल्सो विच कंट्रीज अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान तिबेट एंड साइबेरिया मंगोलिया वेस्टर्न चाइना इन इंडिया वेर इट इज फाउंड ऑल हिमालयन स्टेट्स जम्मू एंड कश्मीर लडाख उत्तराखंड हिमाचल प्रदेश सिक्किम अरुणाचल प्रदेश हिमालयन ओनली वाई बिकॉज इट रिक्वायर स्नो नो नाम देखिए ना स्नो लेपर्ड वेर डू यू फाइंड स्नो ओनली हिमालयन स्टेट्स नो हाँ दैट्स वाई रिमेंबर लाइक दिस लॉजिक यू शुड ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड एंड नो लडाख state animal last year it was declared in 2021 as a state animal of ladakh snow leopard it was in news last year for this purpose what are the threats poaching and habitat destruction following infrastructure development iucn status is vulnerable theek hai iucn status is vulnerable <clears throat> now in addition to this some extra information the cat family species found in india and out of this seven let's say which are there in india naturally found in india wo kaun se hai wo dekhte hain see here the panthera species are five total panthera species are five kaun se kaun se hai tiger critical it is not critically endangered endangered iucn status tiger panthera tigris then there is lion panthera leo it is vulnerable then jaguar panthera onca near threatened now jaguar is not found in india no nahi no america mein south america north america mein milta hai leopard is found panthera pardus vulnerable and snow leopard is also found panthera uncia vulnerable theek hai and cougar puma लीस्ट कंसर्ट ठीक है जैगवार इज फाउंड इन इंडिया सॉरी ये बताना रह गया है एक दो तीन और चार सॉरी कौन सा है ये चीता इज रिसेंटली इंट्रोड्यूस फर्स्ट फाइव आर फाउंड इन इंडिया पूगर इज नॉट फाउंड इन इंडिया ओके इट इज द ओनली प्यूमा फैमिली स्पेसिस remember three families are there of this cat family theek hai one is panthera uske panch species hai ye pehle panch then there is puma family of which cougar is the only living species remaining and least concern and then there is cheetah it is having asinax family theek hai asinax is the name of the family for cheetah and the name scientific name jubatus and it is vulnerable in india it was extinct and recently it was reintroduced where kuno palpur national park or kuno national park madhya pradesh hai na ab ye sab information in sab ke information ke liye you should read this article note it down cheetahs and others know the seven big cats indian express इंटरनेट पे आप ये आर्टिकल पढ़िए या फिर आपके पास अगर जब ये री इंट्रोडक्शन हो रहा था ना पिछले महीने चीता का तो उस टाइम पे ये आर्टिकल आया था उसी दिन या दूसरे दिन ये 16 को हुआ था या 17 को हुआ था उसी टाइम पे ये आर्टिकल आया था चीताज एंड अदर्स नो द सेवन बिकेट वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग वन क्वेश्चन इन प्रिलिम्स फ्रॉम दिस आर्टिकल इट ये सारे जो स्पेसीज है उनका डिस्क्रिप्शन दिया गया है और उनमें डिफरेंस भी बताया गया है कि हाउ लेट्स से दिस दिस जैगुआर लेपर्ड एंड स्नो लेपर्ड आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इच अदर ठीक है इट इज सिक्सटीन और सेवनटीन सेप्टेम्बर प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स बर्थडे और द नेक्स्ट डे ही इंट्रोड्यूस दैट डे ओनली ना ओके फाइन नाउ इसरो प्रपोजेस डेडिकेटेड सैटेलाइट फॉर सपोर्टिंग एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर ओके सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई लुक एट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन 
2016 mains examination discuss india's achievements in the field of space science and technology this is talking about india's achievement but second part how the application of this technology has helped india in its socio economic development one aspect of this second part is agriculture sector how it has helped in agriculture sector for extension services so that's why i, I was telling you ki kaise question aata hai usme ye information use karna chahiye application of space science for agriculture sector aisa specific question bhi aa sakta hai okay so yes now <clears throat> So ISRO chief was saying that minimum of two satellites will be needed to guarantee adequate coverage of entire agriculture area of the country. They will add a gamut of farm related activities related to crop forecasting, pesticide application, irrigation, soil data, generation of critical data related to drought. यही तो लिखना है आंसर में. How satellites? or satellite based systems could be used for agriculture sector be it gis geographical information system gps global positioning system remote sensing these techniques are used in agriculture sector fine okay so thereafter he also suggested Earth Observation Council to be created for addressing current deficiencies in Earth observation capabilities and data utilization. वो बोल रहे हैं कि ऐसा एक काउंसिल होना चाहिए. That will be called as Earth Observation Council, so as to effectively and efficiently use the available data from these satellites. ठीक है? Okay. Now, the similar relevant news. ISRO's own next generation launch vehicles may assume PSLV's role. Polar satellite launch vehicle is often called as trusted workhorse of ISRO. Why trusted? Only one or two failures happened till the date for launching. So it is one of the most successful launch vehicle that India had and now some day it is going to retire no. So isse behtar wala abhi aayega na agla wala. तो उसको क्या बोला जा रहा है नेक्स्ट जनरेशन लॉन्च व्हीकल नाउ इट विल बी कॉस्ट इफिशियंट थ्री स्टेज रीयूजेबल हेवी लिफ्ट व्हीकल विथ पेलोड कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ टेन टन्स टू जियो स्टेशनरी ट्रांसफर ऑर्बिट सो इट विल बी कैरिंग दैट टू जियो स्टेशनरी ऑर्बिट एंड इट इज फार्दर वन नो इट्स अराउंड थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड किलोमीटर फ्रॉम द अर्थ सर्फेस PSLV was largely used for low earth orbit near 500 600 km from the earth surface launch of PSLV polar satellites we can say okay so this next generation launch vehicle will feature semi cryogenic propulsion for booster stages which is cheaper and efficient the third stage is the booster stage and semi cryogenic the cryogenic third stage if you remember mk mk cryogenic stage cryogenic engine it used for gslv launch now it will be having simple and robust design also because we are using it for reuse reusable launch vehicle system no so that's why simple and robust uh, let's say design will allow bulk manufacturing modularity in systems and subsystems and stages and minimal turnaround time to bahut zara number manufacture ho sakta hai if simple design is there theek hai so this is going to be the future we can say now this is there on friday review page on friday friday review supplement will be there to the hindu newspaper दो सप्लीमेंट आते हैं इंपॉर्टेंट एक फ्राइडे को आता है एक संडे को आता है फ्राइडे को जो बोलते हैं हम फ्राइडे रिव्यू दे आर द रिव्यू ऑफ मूवीज और बुक्स और एनी ड्रामा आर्ट एंड कल्चर रिलेटेड इवेंट्स थिएट्रिकल ड्रामा और स्पेशली सदर्न इंडियन स्टेट्स से होता है एंड यूपीसी ऑल्सो आस्क क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम आर्ट एंड कल्चर परस्पेक्टिव 
this is mentioned Villu Pattu because the exponent of Villu Pattu, uh, he was Padma Shri awardee and he died recently. Name is not important for us, but this music theatre form is important for us, which he popularized in Karnataka, sorry, not Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. It is popular folk music of Tamil Nadu and the lead singer also plays the role of main performer. He also handles the dominating instrument which is bow shaped. Look at this photo. Okay, and he is actually playing on that bow music. That's why it is called bow song. Villu Pattu. Nam hi usi ke upar gira hai. And the themes. Yes, the songs revolve around the theological themes and conquest of good over evil. Okay, religious, theological, matlab, religious themes, like Ramayana, hai, Mahabharat, hai, Puranas, hai, wo sab hota hai, gaano mein. Hai? Okay. Now, I was talking about this data that you should be writing in your answer, MG Narega. Importance of social sector schemes during the lockdown, MG Narega. This study was conducted by Center for Sustainable Employment, Azim Premji University, Collaborative Research and Dissemination, Samaj Pragati Sahyog and Narega Consortium. So many non-profit organizations together conducted this survey and the important findings, the wages earned under the act help people compensate between 20% to 80% of income loss incurred during the lockdown. Very important. Thereafter, MG Narega was unable to meet with the actual demand from the ground. How? Across the 8 blocks that were surveyed, on an average, 39% of the households did not get a single day's work. Demand was very much in lockdown ke time pe because of reverse migration. All these workers from the urban cities, they went back to villages. And they started demanding work under MG Narega's because they didn't have any work in the other village. And therefore, sudden demand, increase in demand, government or administration could not provide the work also. So, what do you get in this? Unemployment allowance in MG Narega. If the government is not able to provide the work in a stipulated time period, then there is unemployment allowance given to those people and from this uh, income loss is compensated. ठीक है कुछ लोगों को काम मिला कुछ लोगों को जहाँ को नहीं मिला उनको unemployment allowance मिला ठीक है जो बेरोजगारी भत्ता बोलते हैं उसको है ना unemployment allowance okay fine now mains question so all these questions relates to first article that we discussed. Everyone try to answer, write answers to these questions at home. अगर नहीं समझ में आ रहा है तो article और फिर से पढ़िए judgment फिर से पढ़िए। यहाँ पे मैं ये बोलना चाहूँगा कि the Hindu newspaper 20th September lead article written by Shrit Parth Sarathi. You read this article again. It is providing analysis on this issue. Essential practices of religion. <coughs> okay. Essential practices of religion. Yes. So what is essential practice doctrine? With reference to Supreme Court judgments, explain its evolution and issues related to doctrine. This part, you will get more number of judgments in this article. And thereafter, reasonable accommodation should be the course as long as the hijab or any wear, religious or otherwise, does not detract from uniform. Argue. Give your opinion. When I say argue, you argue from both sides. And in the end, you provide your balanced opinion. And here, when you take the opinion or stand in the end, try to take the stand in favor of reasonable accommodation. Because even in the past, Supreme Court has taken, uh, let's say, decisions regarding this or on the basis of this. Permitting one community to wear religious symbols to the classroom 
will be antithesis to secularism. See, the one thing or one concept is secularism here. So now, secularism has two concepts. Let me tell you here. And both judges were having different views. One judge is saying that secularism means equality among the religion or equal treatment of religion. And the other judge was having view that secularism means showing tolerance towards diversity. This is very important. And both views stand. This is the broader view. This is the broader view. This is the literal view, no? So, ye answer karte ho, aapko, dekhye, justify in the light of recent controversy over hijab in Karnataka. So these questions are framed meticulously and you should pay attention and try to address the demand of the question properly. Yes, next year they can ask. Now what should be answer to this question? Everyone, online students, try to attempt it, write in the comment box. Okay, answer in the comment box. Yes, what will answer? Hmm? Hmm. In India, it is found only in Himalayan states, snow leopard, that is true. Then thereafter, IUCN conservation status is vulnerable, it is not endangered. So second statement is incorrect. Thereafter, it is state animal of Ladakh, this is true. So 1 and 3 is correct, right? So D is the correct answer. Then. जो चीज मैंने नहीं बताई उसमें doubt हो रहा है। The thing I have not talked about उसी पे doubt हो रहा है। Yes, so its headquarters is located in France, that is true. Interpol president is elected by Interpol assembly for four years. This is incorrect. In India, research and analysis wing, which is let's say for external outside India investigation. It is not responsible for coordinating. In India, it is Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI. Understood? So, chief investigating agency of the country is basically the coordinating agency with Interpol in each every country. So, India mein chief investigating agency hai? CBI. It is responsible for this. Clear? Hai? M. Lakshmikan mein diya hua hai. अगर आप CBI पढ़ते हैं वहाँ पर, it is given there, okay? So this is incorrect. One only is the correct answer, no? तो ऐसे इसमें confusion होता है. We need to know about it. अब आप M लक्ष्मीकांत पढ़ते हैं और current affairs यहाँ से पढ़ते हैं properly, तो आपका ये question निकल जाता है. समझ में आ रहा है? ठीक है, okay, fine. So these are the important articles. Any question from your side? Okay then, let us stop, fine.